Okay, I think uh, we'll go ahead and get started uh, with our orientation here. Is it an orientation? We'll call it an orientation, right? Uh, good information for you. Uh, my name is Ernesto Oliveras. I'm the current mayor of the city of Santa Rosa, and I do want to uh, welcome uh, those members of the public who have come out to uh, learn more about what our boards and commissions uh, do here for the city. Uh, what we're going to do is, and, and, and just to let you know, we are uh, recording today's uh, session so that those who could not be here in person can access this on our city website, so that'll be available for them. So uh, what I'm going to do today is, is I'm going to ask uh, each of our uh, current uh, board chairs who are here or their representatives after I speak to just give you a very quick, maybe one minute introduction about who they are and maybe a little bit of their experience on that certain board and commission. And then followed by that, we're gonna act, we have staff here that is a part of the uh, staff for those boards and commissions that are gonna give you a little bit more information, maybe a two to three minute snapshot of the duties and responsibilities of those various boards and commissions, uh, any special skills that they're looking for, uh, anything else that they may wish to share. And if you have an agenda, I think on the agenda shows that we're going to be having uh, questions and answers at the end. I think it would be easier that as, as we go through, as staff presents, if you have a question about that specific board or commission, I think it would be easier for you to go ahead and ask that question during that time. So we'll make sure that we'll allow time during that process for your questions to make sure they're answered. But I, again, I do want to thank you for, for your interest in public service and for uh, volunteering your time for our community. It's very important. I think you will find it rewarding if you if you do uh, choose to move on and apply for a boarding commission. So thank you for stepping forward and being part of a process that uh, is, is wonderful to be a part of. So with that, I will begin uh, by calling out some of our boarding commission uh, representatives uh, to give you a very quick snapshot of, of their experience. Uh, so we'll begin with our Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Board. And uh, Beth, you, you could come here, and we also have uh, two uh, microphones up at the top, and we should be able to record from either of them, correct? Thank you. So my name is Beth Dadko, and I am the current chair of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Board. And um, basically, you know, my experience has been wonderful. I, we have a really wonderful public works staff, and we provide a lot of um, input for the public works staff and comment on different projects and plans uh, for our you know, public works plan and also um, comment on different grant applications and things like that. Uh, we, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a really great ex experience and um, I encourage anybody who's interested in bicycle and pedestrian safety, especially in light, we have you know, had some recent, lots of recent fatalities and, and injuries and crosswalks and I'm sure you're all aware, so we're, we're discussing that as well and, and always trying to make the city a safer place for bike and pedestrians. Thanks. Thank you. And how's our volume? Can we hear? We're, we're okay? I don't, not everybody has the advantage of being as close to the microphone as I am, so if you need to, you can, you can use the handheld mic as well. So next we'll ask our uh, Board of uh, Community Services. Stan Gal and I'm representing the Board of Community Services. The chair was unable to be here. Um, we oversee the parks in the community and the buildings like Finley Center, Senior Center, um, set policy for park. Uh, I advise the council on um, any improvements or any uh, actions that need to be taken with the parks and um, rec department. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Uh, I, I don't see Dick here. He was going to try to make it here, so we'll, we will wait on the Board of Public Utilities. We'll let staff uh, give you more details on that. Uh, Community Advisory Board, Tanya. Good afternoon. My name is Tanya Narath, and I'm the chair of uh, the Community Advisory Board. And like Beth, my experience on the board has been very positive. It's a great board to serve on if you're interested in learning more about the issues and opportunities um, that residents are experiencing in the city. Um, we manage a grant program that funds community improvement grants, and so we get an opportunity once a year to hear from neighborhoods and residents who have ideas for really neat projects to bring their neighborhoods together. Um, we've supported grants for neighborhood gardens, benches, mural projects, you name it. So that's uh, been a highlight of our year. And we are looking for new members of our board who are interested in getting more involved in the community. We're a very active board in terms of um, being out in the community, meeting with neighborhoods, going to community meetings. So it's not just a one, once a month commitment for a board meeting. We are really looking for people who want to be out, out and about in the community. And uh, I would highly recommend it to anyone. It's been a great experience. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Board of Building Regulations Appeals. I'm Bill Dodson, and I'm the current chair of that board, which uh, meets twice a year. We meet in January and July at a regular meeting to discuss any issues that uh, may be forthcoming. Uh, but we serve at the, um, uh, as an on-call basis when any property owner files an appeal to the uh, building department uh, against one of their uh, rulings. And uh, we will uh, listen to uh, uh, all presentations on the matter and uh, meet and make a decision whether we su uh, support or appeal the board, uh, or appeal, support or uh, disapprove the appeal. Uh, it's not very uh, heavy lifting, but it's a very important role to have uh, and I'm uh, particularly looking to replace myself as I've been on it for six years and I will be leaving, so I'm uh, encouraging people to apply. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Dan Flock with uh, Cultural Heritage Board. Hello, I'm Daniel Flock. I'm the chair of the Cultural Heritage Board for the City of Santa Rosa. And we're a seven-member board who have um, interest or expertise in historic preservation and in historic preservation issues. Um, we review residential projects in historic districts and we um, on occasion work with Design Review Board and Planning Commission to review commercial projects where they occur within a historic district um, or a historic commercial district in Santa Rosa. It's a great board. Um, we get along really well and it's been a good experience to see consensus build with that board over time. And um, so if you are a person who likes to roll up your sleeves and you like historic preservation and old buildings and um, hearing that so that no other board has to deal with that level of detail because it is kind of a niche piece in Santa Rosa's governmental structure, then uh, this is the board for you. So please apply. Thank well you. Well done, thank you. Patty. Uh, uh, Planning Commission. Microphone works for my size, too. <laughs> Patty Sisko, Planning Commission, current chair. I have been on the Planning Commission for 11 years, so I think it goes without saying that I think it's a wonderful board and a, and a wonderful opportunity for anybody who is interested in how the city gets put together. Uh, we work with the general plan, the zoning code, um, design guidelines, historic preservation guidelines, receive input from uh, Cultural Heritage Board, design review, parks and uh, the Board of Parks and Rec, um, to review development projects in the city. Um, it's a very passionate job. That Some of the meetings are very fiery, and um, it's, it's very, very exciting. And it's a wonderful opportunity um, to work with an incredible community development staff. We have, I think, just the best planners in the city. So they're, they're all great. And I would encourage anybody who's interested to apply. 
Thank you. Anybody here from uh, Design Review Board? Okay, we'll wait for staff to, to give that information. Uh, Waterways Advisory Committee, Steve? Hi everyone, I'm Steve Rabinowich. I chair the city's Waterways Advisory Committee. Uh, the committee basically started in the mid-1990s when we were involved with the Santa Rosa Creek Master Plan and later developed the Prince Memorial Greenway from that uh, master plan. And since then, the uh, city has done a citywide creek master plan, which covers all the creeks in the city. And so we're in the business of trying to help implement that plan. And uh, some of the things we get involved with are reviewing development proposals along creeks because we want to make sure that where an area is designated for preservation, we keep the vegetation there and keep the environment as it is. But where it's designated as a path, whether it's a pedestrian path or a bike path, we try to make sure that those pathways get developed. And we've been very successful at developing bikeways along our creeks. Uh, the other thing we do is to do creek restoration projects with the help, of course, of the city's great staff. And so, as I mentioned, the Prince Memorial Greenway came about that way. We're trying to extend that over further towards the West End neighborhood. We're now involved with Colgan Creek, and we have a very exciting plan down by Elsie Allen that will be uh, built in 2014, which will include a park and trails in that area. So we're looking for grants, we're looking for uh, projects to work on, and the city's been very successful at getting those grants, uh, 11 million in the last five years, amazingly enough. And we're looking for people who want to help uh, create a better environment for our community. And I think it's very rewarding to see these projects actually happen. So thanks to the staff members who helped there, and hope you consider applying. Thank you, and Emilio, we're ready for our housing authority. Hi, I'm Emilio Gonzalez. I'm uh, chairman of the uh, Housing Authority, and uh, I've been on that board for a little over three years now. And uh, the Housing Authority uh, operates the Section 8 Housing Voucher Program in the city of Santa Rosa. That's the biggest part of our budget today. And it also uh, has a housing trust fund that is used uh, by developers and, uh, for uh, building affordable housing. We make loans, like a bank makes loans, you know, to people for, uh, that are building affordable housing. Uh, right now, our board is at full complement, you know, but we have two positions on our board that are reserved for tenant commissioners. I am one of those. You must be living in uh, subsidized housing and Section 8 housing and be registered in the city of Santa Rosa. And uh, uh, that's about it. If you have any questions about the Housing Authority, just see me after this meeting. Thanks. Yeah. Bye -bye. Thank you, Emilio. And Bobby, uh, measure oversight. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bobby Beeler. I'm the chair of the Measure O Oversight Commission. I'm pleased to see all of you here and wanting to get involved in the city of Santa Rosa. It's a fabulous thing, and it takes all of us to create a wonderful city here. Um, measure O is a tax measure that was passed back in 2005. It allocates a quarter cent um, t to Measure O, which essentially is police, fire, and gang prevention and it is meant to supplement um, the city council budget and enhance police, fire, and gang prevention. The committee is responsible for ensuring that those funds are spent appropriately and that they are allocated to each of those divisions appropriately. Um, it's, it's very interesting and, and I really love to see the, um, the work that police, fire, and parks and rec are able to do with that money. Um, the tax measure essentially raises about $7 million a year that gets allocated to those different departments. And um, it's really inspiring to me to see what they are able to do with that money to en enhance and improve our community. So I definitely encourage you all to get involved. Um, we are going to have openings on this this year, including me. 
Um, as this will be the first time in 10 years, I will not be on a border commission for the city of Santa Rosa. Um, so please come down and, and apply for Measure O. It's really a fabulous group. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. And I think we still have somebody here from uh, personnel board. Yeah, there we go. Good afternoon, my name is Alex Malley. I'm the chairperson of the personnel board. Uh, personnel board is comprised of some at-large members and some union members, and, uh, people nominated by the locals. And we are sort of the outside grievance appeal when it's gone through the process within the city and have not been able to reach some sort of resolution, then we get a shot at it. <clears throat> uh, fortunately for the city, and I will give the city a lot of credit, we don't hear a whole lot of appeals. Uh, most of it is taken care of before it ever comes near us. So we're good, grateful for that. And we are, it has been a good experience for me because this, every commission, or not every commission, every hearing we've had, every resolution has been unanimous by the people on the board. So you've got people from at large and unions, and we've been able to come up with one decision. And we are one of the, I think, few five member boards. So we are appointed by the city council at large. And I don't know what the openings are. People have, we are appointed for terms, I believe. So I'm not sure where we're, what our status is now. Thank you very much. So that, that completes our actual board representatives. And just to let you know, I've had them here since noon. We had our monthly meeting at, at noon today. So some of them may be needing to skip out to get back to their regular lives and jobs. So please excuse them. Those who can stay will stay. So at this point, I'm gonna ask the, uh, staff to go ahead and come down in order that you're listed on the agenda. Uh, go ahead and conduct your uh, own introductions and also make sure you manage uh, questions for your specific uh, uh, commission as well. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rachel Ede. I'm one of the staff people for the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Board along with my colleague, B. Amador. And um, just to tell you a little bit more about BPAB, it's a nine-member board. Um, it's made up of seven members appointed um, in, by the individual city council members, as well as two at-large members, one representing the senior community and one representing the disabled community. Um, the BPAB, that's what we call it, BPAB works with TPW staff, transportation and public works staff, to identify projects and establish priorities for implementation of projects um, making bicycle and pedestrian improvements in the city of Santa Rosa. One of the major efforts is the um, periodic update of the Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan. It's a huge effort. Um, I began to staff the board after the most recent update, so I haven't been through it myself, but it's a very important policy document that uh, lays out the intentions and the policies for further development of bicycle and pedestrian facilities in the city. And there are a number of other um, items that come before BPAB. For example, Beth uh, mentioned grant applications. The city is constantly applying for grant funds to build facilities, and BPAB has input uh, as to what projects from the Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan um, move forward into those grant applications. Um, other examples that, of items that might come before the board that um, fall a little bit outside of the stated scope, but staff might bring. Um, a recent one is a bicycle uh, route signing project and route numbering project where um, the Transportation Public Works staff really wanted the input from uh, specifically folks in the bicycling community about the best uh, design for uh, that project. Um, the board meets every other month. Uh, it's a really great group of people. I've really enjoyed staffing it, and I would encourage anyone um, who's interested to talk to me more about it. And am I, am I taking questions now, or just, okay. Does anyone have any questions right now? Okay. All right, well, I'll be here after, and feel free to come up and uh, contact, or, or contact me later after this meeting. I'm Rachel Lead. I'm in the Transit Division. Thanks very much. Hi, I'm Kelly Magnuson from the Recreation and Parks Department, standing in for Mark Richardson, our department head today. Um, this is the fun department, Recreation and Parks, and it's a really fun board to serve on. Uh, there's seven members that meet the fourth Wednesday of each month at the Finley Community Center. Uh, the meeting's at 4 p.m., and sometimes they have a study session meeting um, two weeks into the month, but that's as needed. That's not every month. The meetings usually go by pretty quickly, um, usually done by 5.30 or 6. Um, the board, I'm gonna read you the mission statement because it kind of explains it better. 
The Board of Community Services advises the City Council on matters relating to the community services within the city with emphasis on recreational, cultural policies, facilities, and programs. So that's encompassing um, 65 parks, the Bennett Valley Golf Course, four community centers. That includes our new person senior wing at the Finley Community Center, the Deterk Round Barn, uh, all, all the facilities, two swimming pools. Um, so a lot of issues come before the board regarding the need for more facilities. Um, we get a lot of neighbors coming into the meetings to talk about the park needs in their neighborhoods and uh, dog park issues. So there's a lot of diversity on our board. And they get to deal with a lot of fun events, cultural events that are coming into the city. So um, I think that's all. I have, unless there's any questions specifically to our board. I have handouts, so I'll leave those up here for those that are interested to pick up later. Thank you. Thank you. Before you come up, Miles, uh, Dick is uh, just arrived, so I'm going to ask Dick to come down, and introduce himself from the Board of Public Utilities, and just kind of very uh, briefly in a minute share his experience on that board, which has been a, a long, long, long time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I am Dick Dowd. I'm the chair of the Board of Public Utilities, and I first joined the board in 1994, and I don't think I had much gray hair then. But I think it's derived from the activities there. And I have been its chair for the last 16 years. It's, it's a challenge. It's, uh, I would say, a long-term commitment because it takes a long time to get infrastructure decisions uh, in place and things built. The Geysers Pipeline was our first really, really large achievement when I went onto the board, uh, that was an EIR that cost about $25 million, and it resulted in a pipeline that cost uh, about $225 million. It went operational in 2003 and has worked pretty flawlessly, except from a, a couple of minor um, contractor involved dig ups of this pipe. Uh, by failing to call underground service alert. But other than that, it's worked flawlessly. I have often said that the construction of that pipeline was an accidental, accidental genius on behalf of the uh, Board of Public Utilities in the City of Santa Rosa, something that the City of Santa Rosa City Council, uh, because it has worked so flawlessly, and the decision was made to go there prior to much talk about global warming and greenhouse gas reductions, and yet it's been a wonderful, wonderful achievement in that arena, and it stabilized the steam field, a lot of pluses, and uh, I'm very, very proud that the city stepped up along with its regional po uh, partners, Roner Park, Sebastopol, and Katati, and uh, put that in place. It is a long-term commitment, um, but I would love to have those of you who are interested uh, talk to me or the mayor or uh, Director Ferris about uh, what it's like. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> I'm Miles Ferris. I'm the Director of Utilities. And uh, for the Board of Public Utilities, it's probably one of the more unique boards. Uh, our total budget it runs about $20 million a year bigger than the general fund that gives you any idea of the scope of what we have to do. As Dick mentioned, you know, we have sub-regional partners. We treat sewage for the sub-regional area. We dispose of wastewater. Uh, and with the geysers project, with our irrigation projects, we're now recycled 98% of the water we receive, which is a pretty phenomenal thing. Um, and the reason I bring these things up, you know, I tell you how many hundred miles of pipe we have and how many roads, we have 41 miles of roads we maintain, you know, things like that that you don't really think of. But the reason I bring it up is when you handled money like this, 
the board spends a great deal of time in committee work on uh, how big should our reserves be? Uh, is that an appropriate expenditure? Uh, should we do this? Should we do that? And there's a lot of groundwork that goes on behind closed doors uh, that goes on and on and on and on until the, the, the committees decide on something. Our committees, by the way, are open to the Brown Act. They're not really closed. Uh, all our committees are Brown Act committees. But the, the, the deal with it is that there's just a ton of work that needs to be done and seven members to do it. And so it is not unlikely to see Dick and my in my operation three, four, or five times a week at a committee or making a, some kind of a presentation. So this is a very active, involved board that spends a lot of time. And the expertise in money, the expertise in, you know, everybody that comes on board wants to know what all our terms are. And in my goodness, we have terms that, you know, acronyms that won't quit. Uh, but that should not scare you. Uh, what should scare you is, uh, with time, you'll understand and, and develop a, a ability to make some really sound decisions. And when Dick talked about the Geysers project, we also have a major rehabilitation program underway for our a continuous program, hopefully for our water and sewer. Uh, we also do stormwater. So it's, it's one of those really gigantical, exciting, but hardworking boards. And uh, I can tell you the members of the board are very excited because for the last 27 years, I've doubled their salary every year, and they still have zero. So, <laughs> other than that, I really do thank the uh, people that want to even think about joining one of these boards because uh, uh, the work is hard, but I think when you're done, you'll see some results and your community is better off for it. And again, I'll be happy to answer any questions on the scope and extent of what we do. So. Thumbnail, hope that was enticing uh, and not put down. Next is Georgia. All right, hello, my name is Georgia Pedgrift. I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator and one of the staff liaison for the Community Advisory Board. And we are also sort of a unique group. Uh, it's a board of 14, and seven are specific to where, are appointed depending on where they live in town. So we have seven community advisory board districts. And then recently changed, so we also have seven at-large positions. And the important part here for members is that you really have an investment in community. And um, in Santa Rosa, in building strong neighborhoods, in supporting our neighborhood associations and civic organizations and that we be sort of that liaison for um, concerns that they may have to helping them find solutions within the city structure. So although we meet once a month, that's really kind of a, a starting point for us. Um, a lot of the work is done out in the community, and it's different depending on the needs of the neighborhood. So in some, you may be supporting them starting a neighborhood watch. In others, um, it could be earthquake preparedness. In others, they have a lot of um, code enforcement issues that they're um, passionate about. It's really following the lead of the neighborhood. And um, we also uh, give input, they're an advisory capacity to the council, so their goal is also to give input to the council on how to better include the public in the public engagement process and um, how to get more participation from the community. So they work really well with the community engagement program. We're really partners in what we do. They come to a lot of the events that, um, that we hold as well. And it's a lot of fun. We are in need of more people. I heard Bobby say she was gonna be without a spot for the first time in 10 years. We will take you. Um, so really, just looking for people who are passionate about Santa Rosa, who love being a, a member of uh, this community. Any questions about? I'm Michael Enright, I'm a supervising engineer in community development in the building division, and this is about the Board of Building Regulations Appeal. Uh, unlike most boards, our job as staff is to make sure the board has as little, little to do as possible, uh, because what they do is they hear appeals on interpretations made by the building official and uh, something related to 
building construction, whether it be a building code, zoning code, uh, code enforcement action, plumbing, electrical, mechanical. And so the board meets twice a year and may meet at other times if there's an appeal filed and they need to act on that. Uh, generally, the board members are intended to be people that have knowledge and expertise in construction related aspects, whether it be architects, contractors, uh, electrical, plumbing, mechanical contractors, uh, even civil engineers can be on the board, structural engineers. And uh, the normal me meetings are in January and July, and they usually last about an hour. And during the year, there may be an update meeting if any codes are coming into effect to keep the board advised of it. But primarily, it meets only when there's appeals filed, and hopefully staff has kept the appeals down to a minimum. We don't stop them. We just try to do our job so there's no reason to have an appeal. Thank you. Hello, I'm Claire Hartman, Supervising Planner with Community Development, and I'm the Staff Liaison to the Planning Commission. And so the Planning Commission, we meet in this, uh, these chambers on the second Thursday of the month. Uh, sometimes if we need to meet twice a month, it will be the fourth Thursday. Uh, Planning Commission focuses on uh, land use decisions and zoning. Uh, so we cover things such as uh, density, or if it's a commercial project, intensity, land use compatibility, um, fit, uh, uh, fit within context, uh, uh, neighborhood um, relations. We also look at uh, the appropriateness of zoning districts or general plan designations, and the commission um, acts as a recommendation um, authority and advises the city council in those, re in those uh, types of uh, questions. Uh, the types of entitlements or actions that the commission um, covers are things like conditional use permits, variances, subdivisions, though we haven't done a lot of those in a few years. We have acted on um, several um, conditional use permits. Uh, the commission's the final review authority for those types. Um, for zoning and general plan, uh, it's a recommendation to the city council. Some of the um, examples of projects that the commission has uh, reviewed in 2012 was very productive. It wasn't a lot of development review, but we did a lot of zoning work. Um, you might have uh, heard about our economic development uh, rezoning projects. There was 13, uh, and they pretty much took most of our time um, with the commission um, throughout uh, this year and a little bit um, from last year. And those included uh, rezoning of specific sites that had outdated planned developments to more um, uh, conforming zoning districts to expedite reoccupancies. Uh, we also looked at growth opportunities through zoning uh, industries such as wine tasting, medical services, and grocery stores. And then uh, in addition to those types of activities, the Planning Commission also looked at uh, Climate Action Plan and the North Station Area Specific Plan. So uh, they do a lot of work for the city. It's a lot of reading. Uh, and there's also, um, you can almost always uh, bet on a lot of neighborhood participation. So. It's not uh, unusual for these chambers to be full uh, and to have uh, quite a big binder to get through uh, for your meeting. But um, as, as um, Chair Sisko has been at the helm for some time, she can contest it's very exciting work. Um, and it's very fun and very rewarding. Uh, so we get to do a lot of good work. Uh, I also want to speak, any questions about Planning Commission? I was going to speak also on Cultural Heritage Board. Um, Cultural Heritage Board, um, this is a, in addition, um, this is also an advisory board to the City Council. Uh, they meet in room seven, which is across the courtyard here. Uh, they meet uh, about once a month. Um, again, if there's additional items, we could meet twice a month, but for the last couple of years, one, we've been meeting once per month. It's the first Wednesday of every month. And as uh, Chair Flock has uh, already attested to, our focus is historic preservation. 
Uh, they do a lot of work um, on a regular basis for homeowners who live in our um, eight historic preservation districts, whether it's remodels or um, new single family homes. In fact, uh, in the last year, they reviewed um, new single family house in the Ridgeway as well as in the McDonald district uh, and, and some major remodels in the Cherry Street neighborhood. Uh, it's a very detail-oriented board. Um, it's very uh, interesting, uh, all the different uh, techniques and implications of uh, making changes to historic structures, and not just the structure, but looking at it in context um, of the entire district. Uh, so it's a very, it's a fun board, and um, like Chair Flock has said, it's real team-oriented. Team um, they do a lot of good work together. Uh, those meetings are a little earlier than the planning commissions. They meet uh, starting at 2.30 in the afternoons. The commission uh, meets at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So that's all I have for those two. Any questions about Cultural Heritage Board? Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Bill Rose. I'm a senior planner in the Community Development Department. I'll be speaking to you about the Design Review Board. Uh, Lisa Kranz is our supervising planner that is staff liaison to the uh, Waterways Advisory Committee. She couldn't make it, so I will uh, discuss that committee with you as well. Uh, the Design Review Board uh, is simply a board that reviews designs. Uh, it's a seven-member advisory board to the City Council. And it acts on issues involving the design quality of the built environment, uh, specifically re related to site planning, architecture, and landscaping. Uh, it's currently made up of uh, people from several different professions. We have architects, engineers, landscape architects, a city planner on the board. Um, the meetings are very informative. I can say that uh, I think every meeting I walk away personally and learn something uh, about all of these different disciplines. Um, it is a, the review authority on design review applications. It makes recommendations to the city council uh, on the city's design guidelines. This board also does environmental review can range anywhere from simple exemptions uh, all the way uh, could do an environmental impact report, although that is fairly rare. Uh, the tools that the Design Review Board utilizes are the general plan, specific plans, the zoning ordinance, the design guidelines, uh, the creek master plan. The orientation is always kind of interesting because the stack of documents is somewhat intimidating, but I think uh, the staff uh, does a very good job of helping the board implement those and utilize those tools. Uh, the board meets in conference room seven. That's a small conference room. It's a fairly informal setting, and I think the, it lends well to very good discussions between staff, the board, the applicants, the architects, and the designers. Um, uh, currently, the board meets once a month. The, uh, that's kind of due to the, the uh, reduction in applications that we've received uh, in the downturn in the econ economy. Uh, typically, we meet two, uh, twice a month, though. They start at 2 p.m., the meetings, uh, and they uh, vary depending on the size of the agenda, but sometimes they will go as late as 6 o'clock. And uh, some recent projects that you may have heard of uh, that the board reviewed uh, are the, uh, is the target at Cotting Town, um, the Santa Rosa Plaza upgrades, and the uh, Range Ranch project. That's a 270-unit uh, residential project. So before I move on to the Waterways Committee, does anybody have any questions on the Design Review Board? So the Waterways Committee is a nine-member committee. Uh, again, it's advisory to the City Council, the Planning Commission, to staff, uh, also to the Design Review Board. Uh, the makeup includes four at-large citizen appointments, two City Council members, a representative from the Planning Commission, the Design Review Board, and the Board of Community Services. Uh, it's a referral body. As Steve mentioned, it reviews public and private uh, improvement projects that are near or related to creeks and waterways. Uh, the key responsibility is to analyze these projects for consistency with the general plan and the creek master plan. Uh, this board meets quarterly, and it's on the fourth Thursday of the month, again in room seven. Uh, so uh, with the cross-section of members uh, and the room, the discussions are very informative. Uh, the meetings typically last between one and two hours. And I pulled up some recent agendas to give you an idea of some of the projects that the board or the committee has reviewed recently. Um, next year, the city will be updating the citywide um, creek master plan. So 
the work plan for that was recently uh, presented to the committee so they could get an idea of what staff will be working on. Um, the board, uh, committee also took a tour recently of the Pearson Reach along the Prince Memorial Greenway to see some uh, upgrades that are proposed for that. So, any questions on the Waterways Advisory Committee? Hi everyone, I'm Dave Gwine, the Director of Economic Development and Housing, talking to you today about the housing part, the housing authority. It's a seven member board, it's one of the unique boards in the city where the seven members are selected by the full council rather than by individual appointment. And but as Emilio said earlier, two of those members are tenant commissioners, the recipients of our Section 8 Renters Assistance Program. We meet the third Monday of each month at 1.30 right here. And um, the business side of the, the shop is basically two main things, the Section 8 program. This is a federally funded uh, subsidy program to help folks pay their rent. It helps 1,400 households here in Santa Rosa. We generate about $1.2 million a month in rental payments. So it's a pretty much a, uh, an enterprise machine going that way. And the other policies this board reviews is our housing trust. And this is a ball of money from federal, state, and local resources that we try to generate new affordable units for people to live here in Santa Rosa. So we'll work with anyone from, say, Habitat for Humanity, or a family that wants to rehab their house, or we might be administrating a loan program from HUD to help people with down payment assistance all the way to multi-million dollar loans to groups like Burbank Housing or Bridge Housing to generate multifamily apartments. It's a lot of fun, it's a lot of financing. If you think of the Housing Authority Trust as a small credit union, uh, we have over $100 million of loan assets, we have over 500 contracts we manage, and 4,000 units in our portfolio. And so it's not only just originating new loans and helping new families get into housing, but it's also refinancing old loans or keeping those uh, uh, projects affordable for a further length of time by new money. So that's the business side of the shop, but if you're interested in really just sort of making sure that people have a decent, safe and sanitary place to live, and you like a community that has a diversity of income groups and housing types, it might be a board that you might consider applying for because we really do try to help people live not just in housing units but in their homes. Emilio and I can take your questions afterwards. Thanks. Hi, I'm Alan Alton. I'm the Administrative Services Officer for the Finance Department and the Staff Liaison for the Measure O Citizen Oversight Committee. Uh, the committee is a seven member oversight committee that has a mission to uh, ensure that the uh, tax revenues and the expenditures that come from those revenues are uh, spent appropriately uh, based on the permissible uses that are in the Measure O ordinance. Uh, the committee meets regularly uh, twice a year once uh, generally around May uh, um, to review the upcoming budget and then uh, the larger meeting uh, or more intense or not intense but more involved meeting in uh, late September to review the past year's expenditures and at that time they also approve a report that the committee sends to the city council. So uh, the committee works with staff to develop uh, an annual report of the uh, uh, programs, accomplishments uh, for both gang, uh, police and fire programs. And, um, and then we present it to council. In fact, we're actually doing that on uh, December 4th. Um, the chair will, will generally give comments and uh, staff members will also talk about their various programs. Um, 
There's not really any special skills for the people that are there. There are a lot of facts and figures. In fact, Bonnie is actually a CPA. But generally, if you, uh, uh, if you have a general understanding of, of uh, police, fire, and gang prevention, you fit right in. Um, and uh, I'm available for any questions if you have them. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Fran Elm. I'm the Human Resources Director here at the city. And I also serve as a secretary to the personnel board. And as you heard Alex say earlier, the personnel board is a five-member board. Um, all members serve a four-year term, and all members are appointed by the council. We do have three at-large members, and we have two seats that are, de that are designated as labor seats. And when a labor seat Comes available, what the city does is we go out to our employee organizations and we ask for recommendations of names who, of individuals who'd be interested in serving on the personnel board, and the council then interviews those individuals and makes an appointment. And when an at-large seat is available, the city manager's office would advertise for that seat, and then the council interviews those applicants and also makes that um, also, it makes that assignment. Um, all, all our board members are currently serving if somewhere within their four-year term. Our first opening, if all our board members remain on the board, will be in uh, December of 2013. And the primary pur purpose of our personnel board is they really are here, they, they hear and render decisions regarding disputes at the city that are concerning uh, appeals of grievances or disciplinary actions. They meet at, on an as-needed basis, and as you heard Alex mention, we don't have too many appeal meetings. Um, we do meet periodically to discuss other city business and also to, uh, for the board to learn more about city operations. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Terry Griffin. I'm the city clerk, and I am in the city manager's office, and that's the office that's responsible for managing the recruitment and application process for boards and commissions. And so I'll just give a brief overview of what that process looks like. Um, the first thing is all applicants, whether you're um, appointed by the full council or appointed by an individual council member, need to complete the application. We have copies of the applications up on the table. Uh, by the door, we have them available on our website. And one uh, new addition to our application this year is a demographic survey. Our city charter requires us to issue an annual report to the council um, whether we are tracking um, geographic and ethnic diversity. So we have uh, included the survey for that purpose. It's voluntary. Um, and so if you, if you would like to complete it, that would be helpful, very helpful to, to us in meeting that requirement of the charter. As I mentioned, there are um, two ways that board and commission members are appointed. Currently, we have about 46 vacancies or pending vacancies at the end of the year. Of those, 40 are appointed by individual council members and another six are appointed by the full council. The process varies a little bit depending on whether you're appointed by an individual council member or the full council. Um, if you're interested in submitting an application, we would love to get those by the uh, 20th of December. That will give us an opportunity to distribute them to the full council. They can have an opportunity to review them over the holidays before they come back in January and start making their appointments. Um, once the um, appointing council members made a selection, they notify the clerk's office and then the clerk's office notifies the applicant and as well as the staff that uh, support that board or commission. We also provide written notice to the full council um, during the month of January as to all of the appointments that, that have been made by individual council members. 
If there's a vacancy that's appointed by the full council, that actually um, entails an interview process. So we will take the applications we've received for that particular board of commission, schedule interviews that coincide with a council meeting day. Um, the council will conduct those interviews before their regular session. And then during the regular session, they'll go through a voting process where they select a, um, an applicant or an appointed person. Uh, those who are appointed to uh, terms that expire the end of this year will assume office on February 1st. That allows for an easier transition between incumbents and new members being appointed. Um, so those people that are currently in positions that expire December will continue to serve the month of January. And of course, they are eligible for re to reapply and be reappointed as, um, as new appointments as well. Um, we will provide an orientation to all new board commission members in February. The city attorney, Caroline Fowler, um, will go over various legal issues such as the Brown Act, which is the um, California's open meeting law, um, conflicts of interest under the Political Reform Act, and uh, Public Records Act issues. And then after um, those issues are discussed and information is provided, each of the um, new board and commission members will meet with their individual staff that support that board and commission and get a more in, a specialized orientation about that board of commission. I wanted to also mention some board and commission members are designated in the city's conflict of interest code. And what that means is those members are required to file statements of economic disclosure within 30 days of assuming office and then annually thereafter. And all board and commission members are required to take what we call AB 1234 training, which is ethics training. Now, that training must be completed within 12 months of appointment. Um, we will offer a session here at City Hall that's interactive, but the um, Fair Political Practices Commission also offers excellent online training that you can do um, on your own time. Uh, so that's all I have about the process. Are there any questions about that? Okay, well, I think that's it. I really wanna thank everybody for coming. Uh, thank you to all of the chairs and board members for coming. I uh, appreciate your time. Thank you to staff. And if you have any further questions, I guess that there's information up on the table. Um, my card is there. If you have questions about the process, feel free to give me a call. And um, we also have a lot of information on the city's website. So thank you.